this is dba challenge for all of you okay so you have to tell me in comments below this video as to how can you enable all the triggers that are owned by one schema inside the oracle database i want to know your answers and i would like to see like what is the shortest method to enable all the triggers owned by an oracle schema i will meet you all in the comments meanwhile let us start the show by the way guys you know what i'm so happy today because i got one email from one of the candidates and i'll ask my team to put a screenshot for that and that email said one guy got a job because of our daily db episode so it's time to clap awesome so this guy sent me an email saying like with our daily db show he got a job and he has sent me an email I, i mean i'm enjoying it that's the goal like we all have to build and help this dba community and also help our fellow dbas grow as much as possible welcome back guys are on the side again and with another episode of daily dba show and i guess we had a dba challenge in the last episode and i saw awesome responses and i guess i responded to a couple of you also with the answers to the dba challenge question right now that being said let us start our today's episode but as always my single most recommendation to all of you is we have to build the biggest dba community so please 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 share these videos let our fellow dbas come on to this channel and let us build the best dba community online that being said don't forget to send your queries questions doubts anything i mean whether it is trainings whether it is database cloud anything that you have to support at dbagenesis.com meanwhile let me start the show with the first question of the day with the cloud transition is the dba job getting more difficult or more easy guys in order for me to answer this question you have to look at a uh, logic like i am trying to build up some logic understand you were a car mechanic i mean not you so understand like there is a car mechanic so the car mechanic job was to repair the car and also to drive the car right but now assume that the car mechanic the mechanic part or the repair part is completely gone right let's take with tesla or electric cars the uh, repair part is completely gone like in electric car what you have you have only battery motor and tires right like the main components to move the car forward correct so comparatively so with the like electronic vehicles or the new vehicles the mechanical part or the repair part is completely gone so from the same person job role the car repair roles are completely gone right that's the first thing the second thing is the mechanic was driving the car but now the mechanic is driving high end cars right there is a shift right the same shift is coming to oracle dba so earlier like if you look at a physical environment there are two types of roles one is the oracle dba the other one is the oracle database architect right so now the oracle dba role is being automated so that means now you are responsible for more or less the architect roles so your database administration job are minimizing but database architect level tasks are increasing that's the role shift in cloud so in cloud you would be more responsible to talk to the client and design solutions in the cloud so like in one of my previous videos i talked like in the stack right when you look at the stack in which people work in a normal company you have a server admin you have a network admin uh, then you have a storage admin then you have the database admin and then comes the application right application and then all the users and clients right so earlier the database admin was uh, kind of like communicating below the stack i mean the dba was responsible to talk to the storage admin system admin network admin right now it is shifting the dba is responsible to talk to the clients the cloud vendors and the application team so your roles are shifting from down to top right in the business stack i mean the same example i gave earlier that being said guys it's important that you understand in cloud you are taking over the role of an architect more or less you will design solutions for the clients as to which cloud is best 
how do you audit the cloud what are the cloud requirements how will you migrate the database to cloud how will application speak to the database in the cloud and so on right understand your database administration roles will be taken over by the cloud guys because they I mean they own the cloud right so they will be responsible to create the server to set up the network to do all the other stuff to give you the database access and then you will be responsible to right away just run the database and perform the migration from physical to cloud that being said with the cloud transition is the dba job getting more difficult or more easy it is getting more easy in terms of administration but what i would say is only dba roles are changing like you are changing your roles from the hardcore dba like the mechanic who was responsible to repair the car to kind of like driving the car but these cars are high end cars right that's the role shift so there is only a role shift i don't believe like is your job getting more easy or more difficult i think it's getting more easy but it's getting difficult on the part of dealing with the clients where you talk with the clients and design solutions now that being said let's move on to the next question of the day there are two queries q1 and q2 optimizer cost for q1 is less than q2 but q2 executes faster why why because if you know or have seen one of my previous episodes i told you that optimizer stats or the cost it does not define like the exact query execution so cost is an estimation all right so let me give you this example once again just for all the other guys if you are not able to recollect my google maps example so let's take in google maps you want to reach a destination okay and google maps will give you multiple paths so it will say that the shortest path is this one and it will take 20 minutes to reach your destination the second shortest path will take 25 minutes for you to reach your destination right now those are estimations like nobody can guarantee like you will reach exactly in 20 minutes what if you are walking right so those estimations depend on the traffic the weather condition whether you are going in daytime night time you going by walk you going by cycle you going by car so optimizer is like a google map estimator so it will estimate things that okay it will take so much time or so much cost for oracle to execute but the actuals might be different like google map is showing it will take 20 minutes for you to reach your destination now you start towards your destination from the path 1 but what if you stop in between to have some uh, drinks or what if you stop in between to have your lunch or want to grab something to eat so like as a user you are now increasing the time to reach the destination right so google doesn't have control on the exact time that the person will take in order to reach the destination the same way optimizer will also give estimates optimizer is not guaranteeing that it will exactly take that much time that being said it is very well possible inside oracle that you have multiple queries so two queries are like one query cost is higher than the other one but still the higher cost query is running faster it happens right i mean that's how oracle is so optimizer is not giving you actuals actuals or execution of a query will be defined only when the query is has been executed so query execution is different estimating on how much it will take to execute the query is a different case so optimizer does a rough estimation like oracle sorry like google maps how it does the estimations on when you will reach your destination so estimation actual execution both are completely different things so you should not compare these two i mean at least in most of the cases but now you might say like okay arun if you are not comparing then why do we need cost you still need some averages right in order to define like which is best correct so the same way like if google says like you have 10 path to reach your destination now it will be a headache on you or it will be a challenge for you to define which path you should choose so if there is a cost or a time that if google gives you it 
makes your life easy in order to identify which path is best. So that's why these costs defined by the optimizer inside Oracle, they also serve a kind of like uh, estimator for Oracle to define like, okay, this plan might be better, but at the end, as I mentioned, after execution only, it depends whether the execution plan is perfect or the cost estimations were correct. Those all comes into picture. That being said, let's move on to the next question of the day. I would like to know more about autonomous database and how will it change the current roles we DBAs have now. I have taken a special episode. I think it was our Silver Jubilee episode go and check the daily db episode number 25 which describes what are things or what role changes dbas will have in cloud like most of your role changes would be towards database migrations okay so how would you migrate the database to cloud so cloud auditing database migrations to the clouds and how would your application speak to the cloud database? These are three core skills that are required by every DBA in cloud. So as a DBA, this is how your roles are changing in cloud. So for a cloud DBA, this, I mean, these three are the main skills that you need. Let's move on. The next one we have, difference between SRV CTL start scan versus SRV CTL start scan listener very simple very straightforward srv ctl start scan will start the scan virtual ips scan vips srv ctl start scan listener will start the listeners which are running on those virtual ips you get the difference virtual ip starting the scan virtual ips and starting the scan listeners running on virtual ips both are different commands right so let's move on to the next question i guess this is the last one what is the difference between ASM striping and ASM rebalancing? ASM striping and rebalancing both are exactly same, but you need to understand the context when it comes into picture. So ASM striping is like you have two disks inside one ASM disk group. So whenever you insert the data, what will happen is data will be evenly distributed on both the disks. Like Oracle or ASM will not store all the data into one disk, right? So this is a way to evenly distribute data onto the two disks, right? Now what is rebalancing? Rebalancing is you already have these two disks and you are adding one more disk to the ASM disk group, right? So now you have one, two, three, three disk groups. So when you add this new hard disk to the disk group, which is blank, and these two disks, which already have even data because ASM stores data evenly, now the job of ASM rebalancing is to redistribute this data which was on two disks to evenly distribute on all the three disks. That is called as rebalancing. So ASM striping will come into picture when you are inserting the data and ASM will redistribute the data among all the ASM disks evenly. Okay, It won't store all data into one disk, it will distribute evenly. right? And ASM rebalancing will always come into picture when you add or remove a disk from the ASM disk group, then the data needs to be rebalanced or redistributed among the disks. That's why it is called as rebalancing. So technically, striping can be called as a balancing act. Okay, So striping is like when data is being stored inside ASM disk group, it is being balanced in all the disks. right? But when you add or remove a disk, it has to be rebalanced. That's why the name is rebalancing, right? So, I mean, both are amazing concepts and I, I think you guys get it. So guys, that's all I had for today's episode and I guess let's move on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question. I mean, we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back guys, Arun this side. And guys, this is a quick thing. I was working with a development team and this is something I want each one of you to listen to because this is very important. Now, what this application team was trying is they were trying to populate 52,000 records when they type in the name field. So their idea was they had one form and the database table was having 52,000 records, like 52,000 employees, just take it as an employee. So whenever somebody clicks on the name field, the text box, they wanted a drop down with all the 52,000 names, right? First name or last name, whatever it was 
So when I sat in the meeting, my question was like, why do you want to populate all 52,000 like list into a list box or a drop down box, which is like a heavy uh, kind of like you're burdening the application. So then we had to work and build a workaround for this one. Now, guess what? It was a simple workaround. So what I had suggested them is, and this is something you all will resonate with me also. I asked them, can we like when the user types only the first three characters of the name, then start populating the names from the database, which match, which matches, which match, which matches those three characters. So it's like probably if let's take I'm uh, typing John. So J O H. Now understand if we filter the entire 52,000 records where the names are starting with J O H, the number of fields that needs to be populated or the number of results that needs to be populated in the list or the, or the drop down box will be very less. So when we implemented this one, I think the application response time went ahead. And this is the deal guys. It is not always the problem with the database. Sometimes you also sit with the application team and also check with them like what they are doing. Like you should have a check on the, uh, like the developers to see what stupid logics they are building. And sometimes some of your logics like sorting or some of your simple SQL learnings might tweak the application, which might increase the response time, right? Assume this every time selecting 52,000 records from the database, populating it into the drop down, like, and then those same developers will say your database is slow. I mean, your code is nonsense. That should, I mean, that's how it looked to me. So that being said, guys, like, as I always say, it's not always problem with the database. Sometimes the problem might be with the developer. Sometimes the problem might be with the network guy. Sometimes the problem might be with the storage team and number of factors, right? So don't always own the errors. Don't always say that, oh, you know what, if somebody's saying database is slow, so I'm not good at performance tuning. I need to learn performance tuning. No, not like that. Think logically. There are hundred ways to solve very, simple problems or there are thousand ways, thousand simple ways to solve one complex problem, right? Find that simple solution and most of the times simple solutions work a lot. That being said, I'll meet you all in the next episode. Till then, take care. Bye. -bye.